Hello, hello, students. This is Shayna from EspressoEnglish.net. I am doing this um, live stream again because I think I actually did it without sound before. So I'm going to teach this lesson again, um, and hopefully this time we have sound. I got my microphone right here. Okay, so today's English in the News lesson is about the problem of homelessness in New York City. So if a person is homeless, it means he or she doesn't have a place to live. So a homeless person um, might sleep on the streets or they might try to stay with friends, but it's a problem because it's not good uh, for a person to be homeless. Uh, to not have a place to live. So the article that I read in today's newspaper said that New York City is going to allocate $1.6 billion to solving the problem of homelessness. So this verb allocate means to reserve something for a specific purpose, okay? So in this case, it's talking about New York City reserving some money for the purpose of helping homeless people. You'll often see the verb allocate with money when talking about government or a company allocating funds, that means money, uh, or allocating a certain amount of dollars to particular projects or areas. You can also allocate uh, resources, which is a more general word that might mean money, supplies, uh, maybe staff members, people who are going to work on this project. But the verb allocate in general just means to designate something for a specific purpose. So New York City is going to allocate $1.6 billion to helping the homeless. And the article said that this was a historic amount. The word historic means something is important or significant or worthy of attention. Don't get confused. We have two very similar English words. We have historic and historical with A-L at the end. Historical just refers to something in the past in general, okay? But historic refers to something important or something significant. So in this case, the amount of $1.6 billion that's being allocated to homelessness is a historic amount because it is a record uh, amount that the city has allocated, that the city has designated to helping the homeless. So as I mentioned earlier, some homeless people sleep on the streets, but another option is for them to stay in a homeless shelter. And the word shelter in general means any place that protects you from the weather. So it protects you from the rain and the wind and the cold, okay? But in this case, specifically, a homeless shelter is a place where people who don't have anywhere to live can stay or can sleep for the night and be protected from uh, the dangers of the cold and the weather and the open street. And we call that place a homeless shelter. Homeless shelters are usually set up by the government, but they can also be set up by charity organizations or churches that want to help people who are homeless. Well, so New York City is going to spend a lot of money to help homeless people, but that plan is being criticized by some advocates for the homeless. Now this word is very interesting in English. It can be both a noun and a verb. So in the article it was being used as a noun, advocates for the homeless, and that means people who are supporting and helping and people who are in favor of uh, helping homeless people. So when used as a noun, the word advocate is pronounced, this part is actually pronounced kit, advocates for the homeless. You can be an advocate for a number of causes. You can be an advocate for peace. Uh, someone on the other side would be an advocate for war. You can be an advocate for uh, tax cuts, okay, reducing the amount of taxes. So 
If you are an advocate, that means you are a person who supports a particular cause and who works to support uh, that cause. So in the article, it talked about advocates for the homeless, people who help and support homeless people. Now, this word can also be used as a verb. And when it's used as a verb, then it's pronounced advocate, okay? Kate at the end instead of kit. So advocate is... Uh, refers to the action of supporting or the action of uh, being in favor of a cause. So some people advocate a vegetarian diet. That means they support and they are in favor of and they encourage other people to uh, eat vegetarian. So someone who advocates uh, a vegetarian diet would be an advocate of vegetarianism. All right, so we have the noun advocate, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the noun advocate referring to a person who supports a cause, and then we have the verb advocate, meaning the action of supporting a cause. So this article, the word advocates was used as a noun talking about people, advocates for the homeless, people who support homeless people and who are working to help homeless people. And they are criticizing the government's plan to allocate $1.6 billion because they say the problem is that there's no magic bullet for solving homelessness and that just spending a lot of money is not going to help solve the problem. So let me teach you this expression, a magic bullet. A magic bullet refers to a quick, a fast solution that will just instantly solve a problem, okay? And it's very rare, in fact, in reality, to have a magic bullet because most problems are complex and it there's no such thing as a magic bullet that will just solve everything just like that. I often tell my students that there is no magic bullet for English fluency. So a lot of students, I think, are looking for a magic bullet, something that will just help them quickly, instantly, suddenly become fluent in English. And I just believe that that doesn't exist. I think there is no quick solution. So this expression, magic bullet, refers to a quick, instant solution uh, to a problem that will make the problem go away or become resolved instantly. So people, um, advocates for the homeless are saying that spending a lot of money on the problem is not a magic bullet because the problem of homelessness is complex. One reason some people are homeless is because they get evicted from their homes. What does it mean to be evicted? If a person or a family is evicted, it means they are put out of their home. They are forced to leave their home because they can't or they don't pay the rent, okay? So if a family is renting an apartment and they have some financial problems and they stop paying for that place to live, then legally the owner of that apartment can evict them, can force them to leave, okay? So that's what it means to be evicted, it means to be forced to leave your home because you can't uh, pay for the rent, you can't pay to live there. And so when someone is evicted, they often become homeless because they don't have anywhere else to go. However, uh, some people, so there are a lot of people who are staying in the homeless shelters and they're complaining that the homeless shelters are starting to be dangerous and maybe because there are too many people or because some people are behaving badly in the homeless shelter. And so it's these complaints that have spurred the city government to spend more money trying to uh, solve the problem. Spur is a verb and it means to encourage or to cause. So people are complaining about the homeless shelters and the fact that they're not safe and these complaints spurred the government to spend more money. So uh, the people complained and then the result was it encouraged the government to increase the spending and try to solve this problem. So spur is a verb meaning to encourage or cause. And the city government of New York is banking on the $1.6 billion to solve the problem. 
Bank on is a phrasal verb and it simply means depend on or rely on. Uh, the government is expecting the $1.6 billion to help improve the situation or help solve the problem. Um, they are banking on it. They are expecting it. They are depending on it. Um, and they expect it to be successful. So bank on is another way to say depend on. One uh, good point from the article was that some uh, people who work in this area of helping homeless people say that it's been a little bit easier to deal with the government after a certain new leader came on board. Um, this expression, came on board, is interesting. We use uh, the word board to talk about getting onto an airplane or a ship. You might notice if you travel in the airport that they'll say your flight is now boarding. That means you need to get on the airplane. But in, uh, so that's a specific use of the word board in transportation. But when we talk about someone being on board or coming on board, in a more general sense, this expression means to join a uh, a project to join an organization or to join a company. So the article said that there is a new leader who came on board in the government and he has made it a little bit easier for these uh, various organizations to work with the government in helping homeless people. Okay, so come on board uh, is a general expression used for someone joining a project, joining an effort, especially when it comes to someone uh, joining a company or joining uh, the government in a new role. Okay, so those are nine expressions from an article that I read in today's newspaper. And if you read the news in English or if you watch the news in English, I think that's a great way to improve your vocabulary, especially learning words and phrases that you can use to talk about current events. The only problem with learning English from the news is that you're going to learn there's no real uh, method to making progress. You're going to learn a few words here and there kind of randomly um, about all different areas and it can be hard to feel like you're really uh, improving or making progress. So if you really want a step-by-step -step study method, that's what I give in my courses. So I have courses on speaking, listening, vocabulary pronunciation, collocations, business English, all the areas of the English language. And my courses are really step by step. You start at lesson one and you finish the lesson. You go to lesson two, three, four, and you can see yourself improving and making progress as you go through the lessons. So if you'd like to improve your English in that way, consider taking a course with me. If you want to get all of my courses, I have 12 or 13 courses and ebooks. And if you want them all, then there's actually a discount. I call this the complete program. It contains all of my courses and all of my ebooks, e and it would take you about a year to finish all of them because there are about 12 of them, I think. Um, and you get a 35% discount if you buy the complete program, everything, all at the same time. Not only is there a discount, but I will also send you a USB drive in the mail with all the lessons downloaded onto it. So it makes it easy for you to study even offline if you don't have an internet connection all the time. All right. So you can visit EspressoEnglish.net, click on courses, and then click on the complete program for more information about how to get that discount and get all of my courses. Thank you for joining me for today's live lesson. Let's see how many people are online. There are 90 people watching right now. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next English in the News video. Bye for now.